For your birria tacos, you're gonna need your fully cooked pork, a tomato, and this tomato looks okay to me, cilantro, a lime, some mozzarella cheese, your Southwest spice blend, some ramen pork concentrate, some chicken stock concentrate, smoked paprika, and some tortillas. And then you're gonna need some oil, some salt and pepper, and a tablespoon of butter. All right, I've washed and dried all my produce, including the lime. Um, and I'm gonna start with my tomato. I'm gonna start by just cutting off this top. And then what I like to do, that's my flat surface. I'm gonna cut this right in half. So this is to make a little like pico de gallo. And then from here, I actually like to remove the seeds. So what I'm doing is I have my HelloFresh bag here. See, it's my little trash can. And I like to just pull the seeds out by just kind of like sticking my finger underneath there and getting the seeds out so that you're just left with like the tomato flesh. If you wanna leave the seeds, you can leave the seeds. But me personally, I just like to re remove them. So you're just left with something that looks like that and there's none of the seeds. And so then from here, you're gonna go ahead and um, slice this into strips. Now, if we were making this to serve to people, this would be considered a ready to eat food because this tomato is not gonna get cooked and you would wanna wear gloves. But since we're just cooking at home for ourselves, it's fine, just wash your hands. All right, so we're just gonna dice the other half of the tomato just like that. All right, so when it comes to fresh herbs, a lot of times you don't want this tough stem. You just want the leaves. So with my cilantro, I just picked off the leaves basically of all these sprigs and leaving behind the stem. If you get a little bit of stem uh, from these smaller pieces, that's okay. But definitely not, you don't want any of the stem from like this really thick stem right here. So as you can see, I'm just kind of picking the leaves off like so. And then you just kind of gather these all together and just give this a rough chop. You don't want to go too crazy on the chopping because you don't want to completely demolish your cilantro. All right, so that looks good to me and I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to the bowl with my tomato. All right, so directly into my cilantro and tomato, I'm gonna take my lime and my zester. Your zester may look a little different. Just use the small holes of the zester, okay? Um, I'm gonna zest half of this lime. When we're zesting, we only want the colored part. You don't want that like lighter colored part because it's very bitter. So I'm doing this just directly into the bowl so that I don't have to dirty another dish. That's not quite half of it yet. All right. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you'll see on the other side that there's always some of the zest. So just take that and uh, scrape it into the bowl. All right, now I'm going to take my lime and I'm going to cut this into quarters. And we are going to go ahead and juice just half of the lime. And we're going to add it right into our pico de gallo. If you don't have a juicer at home, no big deal. Um, just make sure that you don't get any seeds into your salsa. We're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, I would recommend omitting oil, like, cause using just like a vegetable oil, it's gonna not taste as good. Olive oil has like a natural fruitiness to it that's gonna pair really well with the pico de gallo. So if you don't have it, just don't add olive oil. I really don't recommend putting vegetable oil in there. And then we're gonna just add some salt and pepper. Stir to combine. And there's kind of our pico de gallo.
topping and just put that off to the side. Okay, so I have a large saute pan and I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of oil. I am using olive oil, not vegetable oil, and I'm gonna drain the last of this bottle. Um, but if you have vegetable oil, feel free to use it. I just prefer the flavor of olive oil, so that's what I'm using. And then our pork is completely cooked already, and I'm doing it a little bit different than the HelloFresh instructions say. It said to chop this up on the cutting board, but that seemed like a waste of time. So I'm just kinda gonna just chop it up with my fingers a little bit. Um, as you can see, as I'm like pushing it out, I'm just kind of breaking it up. And then I'll use a spatula to break it up um, even more. And as it cooks, it's gonna start to separate as well. So again, this is fully cooked. Um, what we're doing right now is we are just reheating it. And then to that, I'm gonna add all of my smoked paprika. And then all of my Southwest spice blend. And then I'm going to add some salt. Remember, you shouldn't add too much salt to anything um, when you're like cooking savory because you can always, you know, um, add more. So it's, it's better to add a little bit at a time and add more as needed. You can always salt your meal at the end of a dish too. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of stirring this all together and chopping the meat up. And we're just gonna cook this um, for just a few minutes until the pork is heated through. All right, for this next step, you're gonna need some sort of slotted spoon. This is actually called a spider. Um, and if you do not have a slotted spoon, then I'm gonna recommend that you take your pork out now because we're gonna be adding our stock um, and some water. And so if you don't have a slotted spoon, it's gonna be really hard to remove the pork from that, like all that liquid. So um, again, if you don't have a slotted spoon, remove your pork now and set it off to the side and then continue. If you do have some sort of slotted spoon, at this point, you're gonna add your, um, the chicken stock concentrate So traditional birria is actually made with goat that is slow simmered. So this is definitely mock birria. Uh, most birria that's served in the States though is traditionally or usually pork, but in Mexico it is traditionally um, goat. Don't knock it till you try it. Um, and now I'm adding, I'm adding like the pork ramen stock. And then we add three quarters cup water. Normally I would do this in my liquid measuring cup, but I cannot find my small liquid measuring cup because my children have used it for some odd reason or another. I have no idea where it is. So I'm just gonna stir all this up to combine. We're gonna add um, a little bit more salt if you like, but at least some pepper. And if you don't have a pepper grinder, that's okay. I just prefer the flavor of fresh ground pepper. So pre-ground pepper is fine. And we're just gonna let this cook for like four to five minutes um, until the sauce starts to thicken up just a little bit. So my pork has been simmering away for several minutes in this stock. Um, once it started bubbling, I did turn the heat down a little bit and I'm just taking it and putting it in a bowl with my slotted spoon. And you see I'm kind of like shaking off um, the excess broth. It's okay if there's a little bit of broth in here, obviously you're not looking for like super, super dry. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of like tilt my pan like so. And if you don't get all of the pork, it's okay. I'm trying to get as much as I can. And so at this point, you can let this uh, simmer a little longer if you like and thicken up some more. And then you can taste it and see if it needs more salt, more pepper, 
um, any other seasonings that you feel like it might need, this is your opportunity to go ahead and add them. So traditionally, birria tacos are dunked into the actual, um, the broth, the like consomme. Um, if you'd like to try that method, you absolutely can. Um, if not, you can just use this on the side as the dipping sauce, as the recipe states. So I'm going to make it the way that they are saying to make it, but feel free. This is your opportunity to get creative. So all we're going to do is, um, I have my tablespoon of butter, but I'm going to start by only taking half of it and melting it into a saute pan because I'm not going to be able to make all six tacos at once. So I'm just going to take half of that butter. And then um, I have some tortillas here. You're just going to sprinkle a little bit of the cheese on it. If you have other cheese at home and you want to add extra cheese, feel free. And then you're just going to add some of your pork. The, like strained pork. So this is making six tacos total. So try and evenly divide your meat. And again, like I said, this is not a very traditional. And then you're just gonna fold these in half. And then we can start to saute them. So this is the saute pan that I had half of the butter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place my folded tacos in. And I'm just gonna cook these for like one to two minutes per side and give them a flip halfway through cooking. So these have been cooking for about a minute and I'm just gonna carefully take them and flip them over. And that's kind of what you're looking for, a nice crispy exterior. And I'm gonna let these cook um, for another minute on the other side. And then I'll do that with the remaining three. And add, I'll add the rest of the butter and then add the other three. So once all your tacos are done, you're gonna go ahead and serve this with some of your pico. Um, and then a side of some of your stock here uh, for dipping. As always, be creative with your plating. And I look forward to seeing what y'all come up with.